In this lesson, you will learn about the Wilcoxon signed rank test for dependent samples. If you've been following along with our videos, we recently did one on the sign test. And the difference between the Wilcoxon signed rank test and that of the sign test is that here we find the differences and we also take into account their magnitude. Whereas with the sign test, we only worry about their direction, whether it's plus or minus from the baseline. Now also in that video, we use the exact same question, but in case you missed it, the question reads, suppose we are investigating a new drug hypothesized to lower systolic blood pressure. We select a random sample of subjects and record the resting systolic blood pressure at baseline. Each subject is then given a new drug and the resting systolic blood pressure is measured again after four weeks of drug treatment. The data are shown in the following table. Based on the data, does it appear that the new drug lowers systolic blood pressure? You want to start off by writing out the null and alternative hypothesis, and these are always based on the median of the population, not the mean. The null hypothesis will be that the median of the baseline is less than or equal to that of the post-treatment. And don't forget that we represent median with this tilde on top of mu. The alternative will be the opposite, where the median of the baseline is greater than that of the post-treatment. And remember, this is what we want to see. We want to see that the baseline is greater than that of the post-treatment, because only then can we say that the treatment actually worked. Another way to write down the alternative is to bring this over, where we have the median of the baseline minus the median of the post is greater than zero. One more thing to keep in mind is that we wrote the alternative in terms of the baseline being greater than that of the post. So this is an upper tail test. If we had written in terms of equals and not equals to, then it would be a two tail test. Moving forward, what you wanna do is find the differences by subtracting the post treatment from the baseline. Write down all the differences in a new column in your table then based on the differences, you want to rank those values. In case that's confusing to you, here's what I mean. Here we have an extended table, and I've already gone ahead and found the differences for you. Remember, I subtracted this from that. The smallest difference is shown right here as zero. We will not give a difference of zero any rank. The next largest difference occurs here and over here. Yes, this one's negative four and this one's four, but we do take the absolute. So it doesn't matter whether it's negative four or four. Essentially, these two are in a tie. So since they're in a tie, we can't say that this is one and this is two or vice versa. We simply say 1.5 and 1.5. Now the third largest in magnitude difference is negative eight. Then comes 12, 13 is in fifth place, sixth is for 15, seven, eight, and in ninth place is 28. In this last column, we rewrite these numbers, except those that were negative in this column, the rank is also written in negative. So we have nine, six, five, negative 1.5, negative three, eight, seven, 1.5, and four. So just to summarize, a difference of zero has no rank, and since the fifth and ninth person have the smallest absolute difference, they get ranked 1.5 each to account for rank one and two. This is also why person six has a rank of three as opposed to two because of those two values that tied. And the last column is there. It reattaches the sign of the original difference to the rank. That'll be important later. The statistical test that we use is shown right here where T represents the sum of the positive ranks. Let's go ahead and find out what that is. T is equal to nine plus six plus five plus eight plus seven plus 1.5 plus four. We get a total of 40.5. N represents the maximum number in the rank of absolute differences. So in our case, it's nine. I'll write down N is equal to nine. And now we have everything we need to calculate Z your equation should look like this. If you type this into your calculator correctly, 
your z value should be 2.13. Using this value, we need to find the probability of z being greater than 2.13. We'll take 1 minus the probability of z being less than or equal to 2.13. We need to locate this in a table. You should get 0 0.9834. The difference of these is 0 0.0166. And from this value, we can actually make our decision whether to reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. Because 0 0.0166 is less than 0 0.05, we have to reject the null hypothesis. So we conclude that by the Wilcoxon signed rank test, there is sufficient evidence at 0 0.05 significance level to conclude that the median systolic blood pressure is lower in the post-treatment as compared to the baseline. And this conclusion has more merit than the conclusion we used when we use the sign test instead. This has more statistical power. And so there you have it. That is how to use the Wilcoxon signed rank test for dependent samples.